Good morning, everybody. Um, this, this issue in Oconomowoc is one that's near and dear to us. And as a high school principal for the last uh, decade, it's been uh, one where I've watched families really struggle uh, with their, their uh, kids and with their families um, with opiate abuse. And an issue that really the staff at Oconomowoc High School and uh, the Oconomowoc community has really taken on. And um, our willingness uh, to, to go after this issue and, and to be at the forefront really is an, an emotional response to how many um, families we've watched struggle with this. So um, we're excited today to have our kids listen to uh, what Wisconsin Eye uh, has put together as far as a film goes. The first group of kids went through, uh, could have heard a pin drop. Uh, there was a real impact for kids on um, the, them and their thinking. And that's a real hard thing for adults often to do. Um, is to find a way to impact kids in the way they think about uh, these issues because often we're just old people who are um, you know overreacting and so this morning was really impactful and excited to show it again to the upperclassmen and tonight to our community. It's more than just uh, a message don't do drugs right it's, it's, it's a look at the, the real impact that it's having yeah, and I think at the end it's really a message of hope. And so, so one of the things that I think um, we've maybe overdone is the don't do drugs message. I mean, that, that's where we started, and we, we certainly today have seen um, where that's gotten us to. And I don't mean that that's the wrong message. We certainly don't want kids to do drugs. But I think that the message of hope is an important one because I, a lot of us are impacted by addiction in our lives, and we see it all around us. And if there isn't hope that we can recover from our addiction, then um, you know I'm not sure that people would have the willingness to tackle the problem in the first place. So at the end of this movie, what you leave with is really a message of hope that there are people who recover and that this is, um, this is a tackleable problem for us as a community, so one worth taking on. And still putting the message out there that this is something, something that all walks of life are, are, are struggling with, and there's no stigma on who it's going to affect. Yeah. No, addiction doesn't have any socioeconomic or, or demographic boundaries. I mean, may, maybe, uh, you know, historically we had some uh, pre predetermined ideas about who it was that addiction happened to, but those are gone. Uh, today, addiction uh, crosses all boundaries and impacts all of us in our lives. And so the issue is pertinent for everyone and, and one uh, that I think we're prudent to take on together. Well, the kids, uh, the, the comments that I heard from kids really were about this is the first time that we weren't sort of preached at, uh, that, that, you know, the don't do drugs message, that they really felt like um, the, the stories that they heard, especially the recovery high school, uh, which I thought uh, was impactful uh, on the kids, they didn't know there was such a thing. And so to hear from them about what it is that uh, kids are doing there and what their life situations are, and to see kids who look like them and who live in, you know, scenarios like them, and to see their families in the background in the homes that they grew up in. I think all of that resonates, that this isn't uh, fit the stereotypes or maybe the pictures that they've had in their lives in the past of who it is that's addicted. Good morning. Hi, I'm John Hankus, president of Wisconsin Eye Public Affairs Network. And for Wisconsin Eye, this is a, a big step um, into a brand new type of project for us. So first off, I'd like to congratulate and thank the Wisconsin Eye staff. Uh, most significantly, our program director, Claudia Luz, um, who's taken on a, a lion's share of this effort and this initiative. You know, in the Capitol, which is our core mission, gavel to gavel coverage of the state legislature and the court and the executive branch, uh, we all watch this current budget process and we realize that it is still a partisan environment where common ground is sometimes a difficult place to arrive. But on this issue of addiction and opioid uh, use and abuse in Wisconsin, this is a topic that Democrats and Republicans have walked hand in hand together in passing some rather important initiatives over the course of the last few years. So one of our motivating persons was State Representative John Nigren of Green Bay, whose daughter deals with a substance abuse uh, addiction. And John encouraged Wisconsin I to move forward with this project. Uh, two other folks who I'd like to call out by name are former Governor Tommy Thompson and the former Attorney General J.B. Van Hollen, 
both of whom as well strongly encouraged Wisconsin and I to do what it takes to arrive at the, the end game of this, of this film. With that, there are others who need to be supported and thanked, and I'd like to start with our two major funders, the Relo Family Foundation. This is a private family in the Oconomowoc area. Kathy Relo is a retired nurse. Her daughter, Renee Woods, is a practicing pharmacist. This issue is very close to them and their thinking, and they love to help young people. So partnering with them is Aurora Healthcare. Uh, can't say enough about Dr. Andy Anderson and their VP for community outreach, uh, community affairs, Vivian King. When we approached Aurora, they said, absolutely, we'd like to hear more about this. And it was not a long conversation for them to jump on board and financially help support not only here today, but getting this message out. The big goal, the big audacious goal is to have this viewed by every high school student in the state of Wisconsin. And we're working with the groups and organizations who can help make that possible. So today is the first step of what we know will be a march through Wisconsin over the course of, the next, of this current school year. I'd like to also just quickly say that the motivation for us is to use our voice and our resources to help extend this message. And if we help one young person avoid the trap of addiction, we will have considered this a success. We believe that many will be touched. There are takeaways in this film that are really significant, and they will empower young people to have the courage to say no to using, to have the courage to to go forward and have that conversation with a friend or a family member who's using. And we know that it will help them to also have the courage, if they're struggling, to go see a coach or a counselor or a parent uh, to get the help that they need. Finally, let me um, conclude by saying, you know, we talk about politicians as being hardworking, determined, visionary. We don't often as well talk about them as being compassionate and empathetic in really self-sacrificing uh, in their work and in their jobs. And I'd like to just describe our current Attorney General Brad Schimmel in those terms. Hardworking, determined at the front line of this in the state of Wisconsin, but also doing it with an empathy and a compassion that has really encouraged us to do likewise. With that, let me just uh, introduce our current Attorney General Brad Schimmel and thank him for the significant role uh, in motivating Wisconsin and I in supporting us in this project. Brett? A little over a decade ago, law enforcement agencies around Wisconsin started recognizing that we were finding heroin all over our state. We were having young people and some that were a little older dying from drug overdoses. And the rates were alarming, and they kept getting worse and worse every year. We eventually reached a point where uh, some years ago now, we reached a point where in Wisconsin, more people died from accidental drug overdoses than from all car crashes. And for a long time, there were a number of us who were, we felt kind of like voices in the wilderness trying to get people's attention on this. And the Oconomowoc School District was one of those voices. And I want to thank them for having us here today and for them committing early on to recognizing this problem in their community and not brushing it under the rug, but instead raising public awareness. It was the right thing to do. And now the public is aware. They get it. And uh, we're seeing some, some measures of success. It was two years ago yesterday that uh, DOJ, we launched the Dose of Reality campaign in Wisconsin. It was targeted at two, at two audiences in general, the public and the medical community. And when we launched that, we had some great partners in the medical community, among them Aurora Healthcare. And I want to thank Aurora Healthcare for their steadfast partnership on this as well, as well their courage to step up and recognize the medical community needed to do things differently too. Well, the Dose of Reality has gone after a number of myths is really what we're, we're trying to bust myths in this. One of them, this doesn't happen in my neighborhood. And I think we've reached the point now where every community in Wisconsin understands this is happening in your community. You're not immune from this because you're rural or suburban or urban. It's hitting all of you. 
A message that we're still working hard on is the this only happens to the bad kids message. I we think we've made a lot of progress on this, but I have met now in my time as district attorney and as attorney general, I've met over 500 parents who buried their children to accidental drug overdoses. And I've yet to meet the parent who thought their child was the bad kid. And as a matter of fact, most of these parents I've met have made very compelling cases that their kids were the good kid. Another myth we're going after is the myth that people have about where these drugs come from. Um, they think that uh, this is coming from a drug dealer out on the street or that they're coming directly from a doctor. That's not usually the case. Over 70% of the time when people start abusing prescription painkillers, they didn't get them from a doctor or a traditional drug dealer. They got them from a family member or a friend. Someone shared their drugs or they stole them from someone. We also know that over 80% of the time when people start using heroin, they first, were, they first started abusing prescription narcotic painkillers. It's left us with a very simple message. Use your medications only as they're prescribed to you. No sharing. Lock them up safely and securely in your home. No, I have said this a million times. None of us would leave a loaded handgun sitting on our kitchen counter with teenagers coming in and out of our house all day because that's insane. But not enough people yet are thinking about what's in their medicine cabinet. And what's in their medicine cabinet is killing far more people than handguns. And finally, when you're done using these medications the way your doctor prescribed them, get rid of them safely and securely. I'll tell you, this is where we've seen our biggest measure of success in Wisconsin. It's drug collection after drug collection. We do drug take back days twice a year now. And um, the five of them we've done since 2015 have resulted in Wisconsin together collecting 275,000 pounds of unused medications that are safely destroyed. They're not in our water table. And more importantly, they're not in our medicine cabinets for diversion. That's 15 semi trucks loaded with unused medications. Wisconsin's getting it. We also know the medical community is getting it. We're seeing year after year prescribing of opioids has been dropping in our state. And the medical community has changed its conversation with their patients. The, medic, the uh, state medical examining board put in place aggressive prescribing guidelines that are making a difference. And Wisconsin is collaborating at all levels. The legislature is getting it. They've passed, as you heard about, they've passed 28 aggressive bills, all but one of them unanimously. And the one that had a vote against it was because the person who voted against it wanted more money invested. It wasn't because they disagreed with what was happening. Unanimously. The governor gets it. Our judiciary gets it. We now have nearly 50 counties in Wisconsin that have treatment and diversion courts up and running or about to open up. And that's the best thing we've done for criminal justice ever, is to have treatment and diversion courts addressing root problems. The medical community gets it. We have had, our, in launching Dose of Reality, our partners were beyond just the Department of Health Services and the Department of Safety and Professional uh, Services, we had the hospital association, the medical societies, the pharmacy so society, the dental association, all of them with us working to make a difference. Law enforcement communities in. Law enforcement officers carry Narcan now because they, they are willing, because they know who's, di who's dying from these overdoses. They're willing to turn on their red lights, red lights and siren and rush to get to a scene and want to be there to save somebody from an overdose and the education communities on board too, the, met, the business community, we're all working together. There's been a missing component, and I'm grateful to Wisconsin Eye for taking this up, because we didn't have a comprehensive message tailored to young people in high school that did something other than just scare them. And believe me, we did need to scare people, but we are taking a very deliberate change in course now. We're going to tell young people the truth about what addiction is. We're going to offer them, we're going to offer them 
an opportunity for hope. We're going to try to break down the stigma that keeps people from asking for help because they're ashamed. Addiction is a disease. And experts estimate that about 10% of us are pre physiologically predisposed to fall prey to it. Those are, that's, those are terrible odds for us. They're terrible odds for our young people. We have to stop blaming them for having that, that predisposition and instead work to get them to help. So I am so thrilled and so grateful to Wisconsin Eye for the hard work they did to make this message available to all of our schools in Wisconsin. And I'm so grateful to Aurora Healthcare and I, it's a great privilege to introduce today Dr. Andy Anderson. He is the Vice President and the, um, excuse me, Chief Medical Officer at Aurora Healthcare. I wanted to make sure I got it right. Dr. Anderson, thank you. Thank you, Attorney General Schimmel. I'm Dr. Andy Anderson, uh, Chief Medical Officer at Aurora Healthcare, and I'm very pleased to be here at Economowoc High School in this beautiful auditorium on behalf of Aurora Healthcare. We have great opportunity um, in places such as this to make strides in the war against opioid painkiller misuse and abuse. Across the state and, and across the country, opioids are destroying families and damaging people's lives. The problem actually has gotten worse and worse um, each year over the past several years. The, the governmental account of overdoses um, shows that about 64,000 people died in the year 2016 from medication overdoses. Just think about that. That's about four times the population of Oconomowoc itself dying from drug overdoses in the United States. In Wisconsin itself, the problem also has been escalating um, over the past dozen years or so. And in the year 2014, we had about 600 individuals die in Wisconsin from drug overdoses. It's truly a public health crisis that, that knows no boundaries, affects everyone, every demographic, every part of our communities. And sadly, we know that with heroin in particular, the highest prevalence is in the younger age group, typically in the ages uh, in the 20s. And so it's a, it's a big problem that we have to address in our high schools. Because this has reached epidemic proportions, I'm very optimistic that Wisconsin Eyes documentary will be an important turning point for us to bring that message of hope. And it's also why Aurora Healthcare, the state's largest healthcare system, is so concerned and so committed to helping put an end to this issue. Since I'm a physician, I wanted to take a moment to explain exactly um, how opioids uh, lead to addiction. They, they trigger centers in the brain that cause people to want more. And this affects everyone. Everyone's at risk for this. And simply put, the more you take, the more likely you are to want more. And this can be confused with having pain. It can mislead people to think that the pain's causing them to want more when it's really the opio opioids that are leading to, to people thinking they need more. The good news is there are a number of, of options for pain medication that are non-opioid that are equally effective and, and really don't present that same risk of addiction. Um, and we're working with patients to educate them about those alternatives. Um, and we have resources and we're working with our providers to, to make sure that they understand the guidelines for prescribing opioids and how to identify patients who are showing signs of abusing. We've implemented programs um, such as with surgeries to, to maximize non-narcotic treatments. We've developed a chronic pain program that has uh, addiction specialists and really focuses on principles of psychology and alternatives to opioids for pain management. We also recognize there's a shortage of providers. We need more addiction specialists. We need more psychologists. We need more people to help with this epidemic. Additionally, we're very engaged with local, state, and national government um, in this effort. We support Governor Scott Walker, Attorney General Schimmel, Representative John Nigren, and the HOPE Agenda legislation in supporting programs like the Prescription Drug Monitoring Program. These are just a few of the many things we're partnering to do to help address this epidemic threat to our communities. In the end, the most important work, I think, is, is at home. We really need to encourage these conversations with families, and parents have a big job to have these conversations with their kids. So I encourage parents to talk to their kids about the dangers of opioids and of heroin, and reinforce that medication should only be taken if they're prescribed by their doctor. No medication should be taken from friends. They shouldn't be taken from um, the parent's medicine cabinet. 
and any medication really should be um, taken as the prescription is written. It's my hope that Wisconsin Eye's powerful documentary that will be seen here and elsewhere will be a catalyst to spark those important conversations with families and within communities. Rare Healthcare appreciates the collaborative approach taken by everyone here today to spark these conversations and to en enact positive actions that will help address this big issue. Now I'd like to introduce addiction specialist and co-producer of Straight Forward, Sky Tikkanen. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here today. Um, this documentary really was a, a joy to work on with the Wisconsin Eye team um, and all of the partners that contributed to it. The part that is so exciting to me is that we did look at the research. Uh, we know that just say no isn't an effective prevention message. Um, we know that teaching kids about drugs isn't an effective prevention message and that scaring kids doesn't, doesn't work. Um, the way that we structured this documentary really was to tell teenagers the truth about addiction. We want them to know what puts them at risk. We want them to know what protects them. And we want them to know how to intervene with the people that they love who might be impacted by this disease. This really was an approach of empowerment um, for teens and for our community. As long as we consider this problem to be those people over there, we will never solve the problem. Once we recognize that people that struggle with addiction are part of our community and that our community needs to respond in order to have a hope of changing this, that's when things will really change. Um, I'm hopeful that the, the teenagers that saw this documentary today were impacted and that as more and more schools are able to see the documentary, um, that will, our reach will grow. Thank you. Juniors and seniors are entering the theater for the next showing. But we do have a group of students here who are who saw it this morning who are available to chat with you if you would like. We might want to move that over slightly this direction while they're coming in if you'd like to talk with them. And of course, the rest of our speakers, I believe, schedules are okay for um, for interviews as well. So um, so please, thanks for coming and feel free to, uh, to if I can help you. Yeah. 